Now that we know how to find the inverse of a function, let's take a look at the derivative of the inverse of a function. Instead of just telling you what the relationship is between the derivative or the inverse or the inverse derivative of the inverse, let's just do a little exploration together. So I have my original function f of x is equal to x cubed plus 1, and I want to find a couple of different other functions related to that. So I'm going to start with f prime of x. f prime of x, very straightforward, the derivative of x cubed plus 1, which is 3x squared. And let's also find g of x, which is actually going to be the inverse of f. So g of x, I'll use the g at the end, I'll replace y with x and x with y and solve to get x minus 1 to the 1 third is equal to y inverse or g of x. So that's my inverse function, which we're calling g of x. Now I want to find g prime of x, which is actually the inverse, the derivative of the inverse function. So g prime of x is the derivative of g of x, which is 1 third x minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds, which would give me that g prime of x is equal to 1 over 3 x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. So I've done the math. Now what? Well, let's take a look at what the relationship is going to be between these four functions. So let's find f of 1 and f prime of 1 for just a moment. So if I plug in 1 into f, I get 1 cubed plus 1. So I'm using this original function. 1 cubed plus 1 is going to give me 2. Now if I plug in 1 to the derivative function, 3 times 1 squared is 3. Now what I want to do is I want to use g and g prime, but instead of plugging in 1, I'm going to plug in 2. So if I plug in 2, g of 2 is 2 minus 1, or 1 to the 1 third, which is 1. And g prime of 2 is 1 over 3 times 2 minus 1, which is 1 to the 2 thirds, so that gives me one third. So right now, looking for a pattern, it looks like these two are related as inverses, and that we already knew that this was going to happen, right? That f and the inverse, if 1, 2 is in f of x, then 2, 1 is in g of x, which is the inverse. Okay. Now, if we continued that, we can see that f, x, f of x would give me these three ordered pairs just for the first three values. But if I plug it into g of x, those values are reversed. Now that we already knew. We already knew that if a, an ordered pair is an f of x, then the opposite of the ordered pair is in the inverse. But what we don't know and what we're trying to get to is the fact that if I take the derivative, which is the derivative of the original function and plug in that our same x value, I'm going to get 3, 12, and 27. And if I plug it into the derivative of the inverse, I'm getting the inverse, the multiplicative inverse. So 1 over 3, 1 over 12, 1 over 27. So that's all this um, theorem is saying, is that if f is differentiable and has an inverse function then of g, then g is also differentiable and that g prime of x is equal to 1 divided by f prime of g of x. So it might not seem super helpful. Um, for instance, we're going to work through this first example, and we're going to do it exactly like the last example, but you'll see how helpful it is when we get to that second question. So for the first question, the first thing I would do is find g of x, and g of x is simply the inverse. So I'm going to say that x is equal to 2y squared minus 4, x plus 4 is equal to 2y squared, divide each side by 2, and then take the square root of each side. So the square root of x plus 4 over 2 is equal to y. 
that is the inverse function. And if you want to write that to the one half instead, that's just fine. Now I would have to find f prime of x, which is pretty straightforward for x. And now I'm simply putting those together. So g prime of x is equal to 1 divided by f prime of g of x. Well, g of x we just determined was x plus 4 over 2 to the 1 half. And using this function, the f prime function, I'm simply going to replace x with all that mess. So I have 1 divided by 4 and then x plus 4 over 2 to the 1 half. So this is my derivative of the inverse function. That is g prime of x. And that's what we were asked to find. Now, if I wanted to do the same strategy with the next question and find g of x, I would say x is equal to 1 fourth y cubed plus y minus 1. I would add 1 to each side and quickly start sweating profusely because solving this would not be super fun. So instead, what I can do is use this other little tidbit that they gave me. Because I'm not asked to find g of x, I'm asked to find, sorry, g prime of x, I'm asked to find g prime of 3, and they tell me that f of 2 is equal to 3. So essentially what this means is that if f of 2 is equal to 3, then g of 3 is equal to 2. We know that because that's what an inverse does. So if g of 3 is equal to 2 and f prime of 2 is equal to, let's find f prime. Oh, let me keep with the same color scheme. So f prime of x is equal to 3 fourths x squared plus 1 then f prime of 2 is going to be 3 fourths times 4, so that's 3 plus 1, which is 4. So why is that helpful? Because if f prime of 2 is 4, what is g prime of 2? I'm sorry, of 3. Well, remember that relationship we had said it's just the multiplicative inverse of that. So my final solution would be 1 fourth. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at derivatives and integrals of the natural exponential function. So I would encourage you, if you have not yet watched video 5.1.1, you should watch that right now, as that is when we review everything you need to know about the natural exponential function before we actually differentiate or integrate.